Welcome back to my channel and we're gonna chat today about something that isn't really paranormal in my book just because I usually like I'm talking about ghosts and like haunted stuff and haunted buildings so I kind of want to chat today about something that I don't usually talk about which is UFO stuff men in black but I have a reason why and it's super cool First, I have to tell my production staff thank you because they are so awesome. They saw my video when I talked about Zach Bagans and Deadly Possessions that I was using my water bottle. And they decided they didn't think it looked good in the video. So they went and got me this really cool water bottle. And it's pink. In case you didn't know I liked pink. You know, my hair is pink. My makeup bag. Hi, everybody. So they found this really cool cup and it's actually made out of glass and it's a skull. But it's like, it's glass, like it's hard to break, like you wouldn't want to drop it or anything. But isn't that awesome? I thought it was so exciting. So this is my water, my water cup for filming. Okay, the reason I'm doing this video is because BuzzFeed came out with this really cool video last week and it was in regards to kind of comparing um, you know, the biggest uh, men in black stories that they could find, you know, in the United States, basically. I'm going to link the video below, so make sure you look for the link. It wasn't that long. It was like a 10-minute video, but it was so good. And the reason I wanted to talk about this was because I actually had an experience with, like, not directly, but indirectly from one of my friends with the whole alien men in black thing, and I wanted to share it with you guys because... It's something I've kind of like kept in for a really long time. I was kind of afraid to talk about it. But people are starting to make contact with like alien contact even more now that I thought that it was kind of like appropriate to share it at this point in time. Okay, so I had this friend and his name was Sean. That was his real first name. Um, and I had known him like, I guess I met him when I was about 18 and we'd been friends, you know, probably till I was like 23, 24, somewhere in there. And he was in the Air Force, and uh, he was actually a pilot in the Air Force. I believe he was actually a little bit older than me, and uh, he'd been in for quite a while, and he had decided that he was not going to re-enlist into the Air Force again. So at the time, I was still living in Colorado. Sean was actually living in Texas. He owned a home, and he started taking video footage of alien encounters that he had in the Air Force. He was trying to educate me. He was saying like there's good and bad and all this stuff. I didn't really understand what I was watching. I didn't know if I really believed what he, you know, what this evidence or this video footage was. And um, he decided to make a YouTube channel and basically start posting all this stuff for the public. When he was in the planes, this is when he, you know, thought that he would actually make contact because I can't remember the, they were jets and they're like the really f you know, fast jets. If anybody knows anything about the Air Force, you know, please leave comments below as far as what kind of jet it could have been. But I do know that he could take it almost completely out of the atmosphere or maybe he wasn't supposed to and he did anyways. And that was where he was getting all of this footage from. So he starts getting in touch with Tom DeLong, who's from Blink-182. Tom DeLong, as everybody knows, is super into UFOs and... Um, he's been like a UF, UFO tracker for years and he's got all this footage and um, in fact I think he's working on like a documentary right now to release like evidence to the public. So Tom actually started kind of like egging Sean on to get more because he had access you know to these planes that not a lot of people can fly and so Sean started basically sending this photo evidence um, slash video footage to Tom DeLong. So Tom DeLong's like, you know, this is great stuff, but, you know, just remember, be really careful because the government doesn't want anybody to know about any of this. 
And not too long after that, I get a phone call from Sean, and Sean was like, kind of in like a panic state. So just like a little background on Sean, he was an only child. Um, his parents, he, he was kind of, you know, not close with his parents. He was always kind of like an oddball, and so, you know, as he got older, he didn't really stay in touch with them as often as, as a kid should. So they were pretty distant, and I believe that they lived in another state. I think it was like they were in Utah or Montana, somewhere over there. So in the meantime, Sean calls me one day, and he was like, oh my god, the men in black exist. They are real, and they came to my house. <clears throat> and I was kind of like, you know, I mean, I believe totally that, that like, other beings exist, like, you know, obviously it's kind of silly and ignorant to think that that wouldn't be the case, to think that we're the only people, you know, that are existing or beings that are existing. So, um, I just had, n I've never really learned much about the men in black. In fact, if you need kind of a short phrase as what the men in black are, just to give you like a really quick educational thing is, the Men in Black, which of course we know the Men in Black as Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, of course, but they're actually kind of like you and me, or they do believe that the Men in Black could be alien government, basically. So if someone makes some sort of contact with UFOs or alien life, the Men in Black supposedly show up to your house and threaten you with your life or take the footage or whatever, whatever have you, whatever you believe, there's all kinds of different um, encounters that people have claimed. So Sean claimed that he had three men in black show up to his house in Texas and they basically told him he needed to delete all of the footage or suffer the consequences type of thing. Sean was totally against it. He believed in this. He had, you know, footage that not a lot of people had since he was flying these jets. And uh, he went to work the next day. I don't know how ranks work in the Air Force. I do know how they work in the Army. Um, so I'm not sure, like I want to say it was maybe the equivalent, um, Sean was like a sergeant or a staff sergeant, um, and then he was talking to someone that was maybe like a colonel or something like that. And so he was telling the colonel about what was going on. So Sean tells his boss, oh my gosh, you know, I, I put all of these images out on the internet, and these guys showed up to my house, um, did you send them from the Air Force, tell me what the deal is. And his boss is like, I've heard of this and he was like, you know, being in the Air Force branch, we all know that, you know, we've all had our own encounters, or our own experiences, uh, but the guy was like, you cannot, you know, you should not be releasing this to the public because it could cause hysteria, it could cause um, people to basically headbuck the government saying there's, you know, other beings out there and, um, you know, instead of them listening to our government and you know the way we run things here on this planet they're gonna say oh there's bigger things out there so I don't need to rule you know I don't need to listen to the rules and the government anymore so by the advisement of his um, you know the colonel or who whatever he was uh, he tells Sean he needs to delete everything and, and listen to these guys because he goes they're not one to mess with basically and um, Sean came home and called me and he's like, I know that he, my colonel said this or whoever his boss was. And he goes, but I'm not going to delete them. You know, it's taken me years to gather all this evidence and um, I want the public to know the truth. And so I was like, dude, just be careful. Like, I don't know what this is about. I don't study UFOs and I don't study that kind of thing, but... Um, it's pretty terrifying to think that, you know, they're threatening you with your life and stuff like that. So in the meantime, the next few days, like I would say over the course of maybe seven to nine days, Sean's calling me at least every day, every other day. Um, I was kind of the closest friend that he had since him and I were just friends. We'd never dated or anything, but um, we both understood each other because we were both only children and, you know, neither of us had siblings. So we just got each other. So I was kind of like the sister he never had and he was kind of like the brother I never had. So Sean's calling me, he's like, dude, somebody's outside my house. I don't know what's going on. They're watching me, it's this black sedan. Um, you know, it's the typical story of the men in black when they show up to your house. Um, and he was like, they're, they're watching me and I don't know what's happening. And so I get this other phone call from him. Um, it's probably been like the ninth, seventh or ninth day. I can't remember how long it's been. And he, it's a weird time of day. I want to say it's like 4 in the morning or 4.30 in the morning, something really weird. And he's like, 
oh my god, um, you know, they're gonna take me and they're gonna kill me. And he's like not making sense. He's kind of just like rambling off a bunch of stuff. And um, he sounds like they're watching him and he's on the phone or he thinks like they're outside. I don't know. He wasn't clear. He wasn't really making sense. And I was trying to question him and like he was not giving me any answers. And he's like, uh, you know, they're gonna kill me. He's like panicked. Like he sounds like he's like panting and sweating and like seriously like stressed or distressed, whatever you want to say. And I'm still not getting clear answers. I'm like, where are you? Are you at home? And I, you know, I knew he was at home. And I couldn't tell though, like if they were in front of him and like they let him make a phone call. I, I didn't know, nothing was making sense. And all of a sudden, I, I think it was about a three minute phone call. And all of a sudden the phone line went dead. So a few months had gone by and I hadn't heard from him. I wasn't close with Sean's parents and Finally, I found his parents, okay? So I started to write letters um, and I wasn't getting responses. And uh, then I like, I think I contacted them through Facebook and I, it was at the time when Facebook, the only way they could see your message was if you were their friend. So they never read my messages. Um, they never responded to my messages. And so finally I got a hold of his mom. I actually called his ha a house phone number, like a landline that I had found. Um, I kind of stalked his parents out, to be honest, because I was just worried about my friend. And I got a hold of his mom. And I was like, hey, my name's Crystal. <laughs> and I know you don't know me, but I'm one of Sean's like really good friends. And I got this really weird phone call from him a couple months ago and I've been trying to like reach out to you guys and, and I didn't know any of his other friends and um, Sean actually did not have a Facebook um, and I believe that was like a request that the Air Force had given him so I couldn't like look through his Facebook to you know like in fact he didn't have any social media except for YouTube so I couldn't find friends that he you know that he had and so I get on the phone with his mom and she's like oh oh dear oh dear and I'm like what was that a legit phone call you know like was that legit and, he, and she's like I'm so sorry sweetheart I'm sorry you didn't hear but Sean's passed away and I was like huh Huh? You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I don't believe it. So, the story that they gave his family was he was out doing some sort of training exercises with the planes or whatever, doing demonstrations and whatnot, and somehow he got hurt and he was, he was killed. Um, and it was while he was training here on the state side. Um, they actually sent, like, they had a casket. Um, they... They had a burial service. They did the whole giving the parents the United States flag. Like it was a legitimate Air Force burial or military burial, whatever you want to call it. And I was so confused. So I was like, so where, like he owned his house in Texas. Like, did you, she's like, oh yeah, we sold the house. Um, he didn't have any animals. Like he was just kind of a bachelor, you know? So I guess they went in and just kind of sold everything and, they just accepted that his son was dead. And so I told his mom, I said, you know, um, I just want to let you know about this phone call I got from Sean, like the last time I talked to him. And uh, I'm kind of upset now because like I had tried to call his phone number. Uh, here's the weird part too. Like I tried to call his phone number after that, like not immediately. I would, well, I did try to call afterwards and it would never answer. Or he would never answer. Um, and I was texting and like leaving voicemails, but like a day later, like barely a day later, um, I would call his phone and I do know that he had Verizon because I have Verizon. And um, his phone said that the phone number was disconnected. I started sending Sean emails. Um, he had two or three different email addresses that I had. I would get that like bounce back email that said um, like, like this email doesn't exist or whatever where they give you this like whole like chart and then they send you your mail. It's weird. Um, that was all of it. And this is like a day later, like there was no time lost. And then like I'm on his YouTube page and I'm like, oh good, like the YouTube page is up. And then like a day later, the YouTube page is gone. Like everything's gone. The footage is gone. Um, the, the YouTube channel does not exist. Like whatever, like everything that he has touched has, has now 
been wiped to oblivion basically and this person no longer exists. So I was really kind of upset because at that point I thought maybe he had gotten in trouble with like the Air Force or something. I did end up getting a hold of whoever his rank is. Um, I don't know if you want to call it Colonel. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know Air Force terms to be honest. But I did get a hold of that person on Facebook and he was very vague with me. I said that I had gotten in contact with Sean's parents. Um, and that they had let me know that, that Sean had passed away or whatever. And basically he was just very like, unfortunate circumstances, it happened. Um, you know, gave me the city and state that he's buried in. And so then I was like, I wrote him back and I said, you know, I told him what happened. I was like, I was on the phone with him. He sounded like he was getting ready to like be captured or like killed or whatever you want to call it and like the phone line went dead and the dude never responded to me in fact I think he ended up blocking me on Facebook so that was really really super weird I don't know um I was really upset about it for a long time because Sean was really just a good friend that we talked you know to each other every day um and so honestly I was really convinced for a long time that um he died I thought like he really died but there was something inside me that like I always knew like something happened that was weird and no one really knows or, or they do or like I don't know someone knows something so I ended up actually talking to Blake who you know Blake like he's always on the end credits and like he'll help me do like production and lighting and so Blake was in the army for six years so I was like look I want to tell you this story and you tell me like what you think about it since you were in the military and you know Blake told me he was like you know the military is gonna cover things up they're gonna hide it they don't want people to know no they don't want like mass hysteria you know Blake is he is convinced that at some point the government or military, whoever is going to have to admit that there's other life forms out there. But Blake does not seem to think that Sean is dead. Blake thinks that Sean has basically been taken either maybe into the Air Force or maybe into like a secret branch. Um, Blake said if he was that smart where he was like capturing video and capturing photographs and um, according to Sean, he knew the difference between like good alien ships and like bad alien ships whatever that means i have no idea and then blake thinks that he was so intelligent that they probably took him somewhere changed his name told him he could not talk to his friends and family anymore and obviously he probably got a really big um, salary boost and he's probably working somewhere um doing stuff you know that they try to hide from us basically from us as a society so anyway i am only sharing this with you guys because it was a freaking weird thing that happened to me um, i've always believed in aliens but i've never had like my own encounters thank god and i don't want my own encounters um, and I've never obviously like had an experience with men in black and stuff, but BuzzFeed has the best video and you guys need to watch it. Um, it's supposedly two video footage that they have captured of real men in black walking into this hotel. Um, and the one thing I want you to watch for is the difference in height. There seems to be like a bellboy that's standing near the men in black. And then the men in black are like really super tall, like kind of abnormally tall. In fact, the guys on BuzzFeed make fun of him because they're like, so what are the men in black, like pro basketball players, you know? So watch it. It's cool. It's weird. I'm not really big into aliens. I'm not going to do a lot of alien, uh, you know, videos and whatnot. But this was such a weird, cool story. I just wanted to share it with you guys because I was just excited to um, maybe if Sean's out there, who knows, maybe he's even watching this under a new name. And I never forgot about you, Sean. You were always one of my greatest friends. I love you till the end. And I hope that you're doing what you absolutely love, which is flying airplane, flying planes and jets and uh, making alien contact. So I hope you guys liked my video. Please give me a thumbs up. Um, I know that not all of you guys are super into UFO stuff, but if you are interested in me talking about some more random stuff, leave me a comment below. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys next time. Please stay away from aliens and the men in black. <laughs> Bye guys. We're back from dead.